good afternoon and wherever everybody else is, morning or some of our European friends, it's middle of the night. Um, my name is Jack Krauser. I've been the host of this Psychomania 1 and 2, and I practice periodontics and full mouth implant reconstruction in Palm Beach County, Florida. Um, I practice as a traditional periodontist for most of my career, and for the past about six years, I've been doing both phases in my clinic for prosthetics and the surgical aspects of implants. Through several colleagues who I'm going to give credit to at the beginning of my presentation, you'll see how I um, have incorporated and learned some of the uh, new designs and uh, implant systems available from Norris Medical. The some of the choices that we had for this zygomania two would be to put together a few cases that were in a particular theme or grouping. So I chose to show how I've used the zygomatic and pterygoid implants on previously failed cases that were treated with other implant therapy. I think that's a very important thing that we should learn about because there are so many hundreds of cases that are being done improperly. And there are many, of course, we prefer that they're done properly. So Norris Medical to the rescue. So where are we? There's been basically an explosion in full mouth rehabilitation with dental implants. Um, on any given day, you go on the internet, you can see courses being advertised. There's digital courses, there's model courses, live surgery courses, and this, there's a tremendous amount of education being um, available for us. But there's also so much of a need. There are millions of patients in America that are losing their teeth each year or they're already dentalists or they have terminal dentition. So there's, there's a huge need. So we do need to train colleagues and, uh, and we'll still be all busy. Complications, the more cases we do, the more complications will pop up. Now, today we had from Auntie Pove and Smiler, colleagues from California who are very skilled, they, they touched on how they handle complications, which are very few for them. Quite frankly, in my clinic, it's the same thing, but what I'm seeing more is other types of complications that are bringing the patients in to us. Now, we need to be very cognizant of how to analyze what went wrong, how to eliminate it, rebuild it, repair it, and move on for the patient. Now, one of the themes of the Norris Academy is knowledge and skills. And I, I've always liked that thought. Um, the company can give us new designs, new software, new digital approaches, guided approaches. We're working on new products all the time with the Norris medical people, but it gets down to a fundamental, your knowledge and your skill. If you have the knowledge, but you don't have the skills yet, there are ways that you could learn. And the Norris Academy has many types of courses that could take you on your venture on how you could get your skill level up and then apply your knowledge and go from there. So we are wanting to help these patients and Norris Medical is how we can help these patients together with us. Now, this is a slide that I use in some of my other lectures. It was a quote that I heard a while ago, closing the window of negative opportunity. I did not know who said it, and I've been mentioning it in my lectures for a few years, and nobody came up and said that they were the ones that came up with it. So it's okay that I'm using it. So if we skip down to the bottom, you see that there's a question. Are we saving a tooth or are we reestablishing a dentition? And today we saw the oncological cases where we're getting tremendous results even there. Uh, Zingari was showing his beautiful guided cases and phenomenal prosthetics being um, interplayed and worked on the, the CAD CAM and the CAD PAP steps of these kind of cases. So I think it's a tremendous situation. 
But getting back to the, this question, closing the window of negative opportunity. To me, that means that we're able to do therapies for patients where the prognosis is better. The treatment planning thoughts are, are longer lasting than just doing, let's say, an all-on four with you know four short implants. We can now engage the pterygoid, engage the zygomatic, and go from there. So there was a uh, famous TV show called Kung Fu years ago, where they were looking at the, the Asian masters of teaching how to become a master at a particular discipline. So once you reach the level of a master, you were a grasshopper on that path. So how do we teach our colleagues who want to learn these concepts and they become a grasshopper as well? I call it the educational continuum. Now, Smiler was on earlier today, and he's one of the leaders in the Norris Academy education on multiple levels. So if you look at the, the next uh, categories, the first one is soul search. What I mean there is you just can't say with this therapy, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. You have to really want to do it because there's so much material to absorb, to learn that's interesting not interesting, but you have to learn it. So you have to really ask yourself, is it something that I really want to do? Then you get to passion and desire. So I'd rather do this than play golf. So, you know, I don't have a passion for golf, but th this is what I'm really enjoying. And I meet beautiful, friendly people. And it's, it's a wonderful situation. So it all begins with model-based training because you get to review the anatomy, um, the more anatomy courses you take or observe lectures, you'll pick up another little point here and there. So the model base is a perfect way to, to start off. Then, of course, cadaver is amazing. Um, I've participated with Norris Academy for probably six or seven cadaver courses, and it's amazing how, uh, how skillful a lot of the colleagues are and how clumsy some of them are at the same time. So teaching the cadaver workshop, we're able to what's called reorient the position of the drilled zygomatic implant or pterygoid implant. And that's been extremely helpful my, for me because I'm often reorienting the patients as well in my regular practice. Then what's critically important is you should take a live surgery course with instructors. The one that I'm familiar with is the one from Smiler and his colleagues in Salvoni, Dan Rosen, in Brazil. It's, in my opinion, affordable. It's not a cheapy two-day course. It's a four-day course. It has socialization, fraternization, but a lot of collegialness as you're developing the cases, and you'll learn how to do this very carefully and methodically. Um, we have another colleague in Arizona, Vichy Bruman that does a um, live surgery program, and his are quite nice as well. So just to give a shout out to my teachers. On the upper left, we see Salvoni. Upper right, we have Rami Siev. He was mentioned by Zingari and on some of the papers with Greki. Uh, he's developed, some, on the engineering standpoint, some of the early uh, Norris products. And then, of course, you see Dennis Smiler there, who I said earlier when I introduced him, is one of my longest, oldest buddies. Down below, the two guys that showed me about pterygoids, Dan Rosen on the left, and the other dapper Dan, Dan Holsclaw, who I call them the maestros of pterygoids. I show these two models to look at the posterior zygomatic implant. You see that. It's been reoriented, re-angled. These are the kind of things that we teach at the course. So I'm just trying to give you that information to encourage you to take the courses if you're a beginner. So today, these cases were previously full arch restorations that failed, leaving those patients as dental cripples. What do you do? Many years of my implant training, I had no skill 
enterogoid or zygomatic. And I would refer them or tell them you need a new denture that's, you know, as tight as can be. Professor Bronemark said, no patient should go to sleep with their teeth in a jar. So I always give him credit because his love and passion was to help eliminate edentialism and give people fixed dentitions through the use of implants. Actually, it's 10 years ago now, I co-authored this textbook with several colleagues. Brad and Mark wrote the foreword of the book. And there are some amazing authors in this book, ranging from Malo, Bolshe, Smiler, Ed Bedrosian, Charles Babish, et cetera, that contributed to it. And we're thinking about creating a new textbook for the next few years. Thomas Balshi, as you see his name there, was the first person in this book to mention pterygoid implants. So here we were showing zygomatic implants, the full all on four case type, and Bolshi had mentioned the use of pterygoid. In chapter 27 of that book, the team of Malo and his uh, colleagues showed the so-called Malo protocol, which was a basic uh, all on four concept, or perhaps one a zygomatic or a quad zygomatic, but they did not use pterygoids in their presentation or in the chapter. The same year that the book came out, 2011, Malo wrote a very important paper introducing his concepts to the American dental public by publishing it in the Journal of the American Dental Association, 2011. And they were reviewing their cases that they um, had treated over the last five to 10 years. And there are papers looking at the mandible and in the maxilla for A couple of ways. One, it hastens the, the outcome. You don't have to worry about how long it took for the graft to take, then put in implants and hope that they integrate. It's growing in popularity. I mentioned that earlier because there's more courses, people like it, the results are quite exceptional. So it's growing in popularity. Patient demographics. I know in America, we have the baby boom generation and they're, every day there's tons and tons of patients coming of age for these types of therapies. Design options, you saw from the earlier speakers, Zangari, the beautiful prosthetic work that's available, new materials. So these things are all part and parcel. Another thing that's important from a business perspective is that we can determine the fee, the cost of the lab work, the cost of the products before we even start so we're able to know the fees for the patients. I love these graphic slides because they actually make it clear what we're trying to achieve. With the all on four tilted technique, if we can nestle the implant on the medial wall of the sinus, we get a cortical plate there, the crest, and of course the base of the sinus, you'll get very good stability using that methodology. However, there are areas where the sinus is so pneumatized and you almost have no ridge then you're dealing with the need for a zygomatic implant. Now, pterygoid implants, which is part of my presentation, we have to give tremendous thanks to our colleague, Dan Holsklaw, who they say he wrote the book. And yes, this is his textbook. It's sold out two or three times already. And um, I've been very pleased to have been the writer of his foreword. And again, through Norris Medical, Dan and I have done quite a few cadaver workshops and we've trained lots of colleagues and we'll stay hours longer than the course is scheduled for just to make sure everybody gets it. And we check out the, um, we sometimes remove the facial tissues so we can see what we actually got. Now with pterygoids, Holsklaw has taught us for sure that we get an improved anterior posterior support. So this particular 
is a, it's a guide over a stereolithic model. And it was a guide for a, an anterior all on four case. But if you look at where the pterygoid is, and if we actually got two pterygoids added to this particular case, we've actually doubled the anterior posterior spread. So it's biomechanically a tremendous benefit to our patients. And I'm like almost always trying to do this type of a treatment plan than just a, a simple all on four methodology. And as I do more and more cases, we're getting better at the positioning of the pterygoid and we're able to even do guided pterygoids. <clears throat> Excuse me. In case planning, you see two zygomas, some anterior implants, but with the use of the pterygoid implant, we've picked up another 10, 20% of anterior posterior relationship. Another concept that's become more important and interesting is composite torque value. That's an indication, or it's a theoretical indication of whether the case will have a very solid uh, prognosis. It was originally taught to us by uh, Ole Jensen, an oral surgeon from uh, Colorado, and he published his paper in 2015, looking at all on four type of cases. And he wanted to get at least 120 Newton centimeter of torque added together from each implant. Four implants, you got the 120, and that would be exceptional. Host law has taught us that with the addition of the pterygoid implants, you could pick up 30, 40, 50 Newton centimeter on each one, and you'll get an outstanding composite torque value, which is even better. So it's even more uh, ideal for the prognosis of the case. So now I'll start to review the patients that I brought to, for today's presentation. Judith is a 73-year-old healthy white female. Her nephew did her case 32 years ago in Rome, Italy. So I hope our Italian colleagues are still on and you'll smile when you see it. She told me that her nephew was the Pope's dentist. And that was the Pope, um, Pope John was the Pope then, two Popes ago. She lost touch over the past few years, hasn't seen anybody for 15 years. And let's see what's going on now. Just Pardon me? Pero que no me dejes el video iniciar video. Okay. I'll continue. So she comes in with the prosthesis looking like this. She lost the lateral incisor. She took a toothpaste box, cut out this little tooth shape and glued it on and said that she used toothpaste because it was dental. So you see she's a little, you know, funny type of a patient. The radiographic review shows quite a lot of bone loss. And let's see how we're doing. The cone beam shows a few things. You could see tremendous bone loss all the way up to the floor of the nose. You see moth-eaten uh, maxilla going towards the orbit on both sides. On the axial view, you can see we could go far back to the pterygoids. So when I look at the case, I say, okay, I have good support possibilities there, and I'm gonna need to do size zygomatic implants. Depends on how bad these implants actually are. So let's look what it's gonna be looking like. Now, the prosthesis that was done by her nephew is what's called a spark erosion. And if you're familiar with it, you'll know that it's a very expensive laboratory and prosthetic design. It has a gold alloy inner chamber, and then the prosthesis fits intimately over the bar in the mouth. Ooh, look at what it looks like in the mouth. So you would agree that it's not looking too good in the mouth. So we have a lot of totally failed implants, and we have to help this patient out. Closer view, you could see to the apex, infection, plaque, and a failed situation. So I told her, I have to take these out 
no matter what, early on to allow for the infections to quiet down, to allow for my soft tissues to heal. So I took out the implants, they basically just fell out. And I uh, did a lot of degranulation. I did not do any grafting. And when I sutured it up, I used Gore-Tex suture because I wanted to leave these sutures in for more than three weeks. And I didn't want it to get the wicking effect of silk or um, the uh, chromic gut, which would open up perhaps too soon. Now you notice that I kept two implants and my decision was I wanted something to hold her prosthesis in a relined state while everything was healing. So I had that bar, I cleaned it up a little bit. I shortened the bar from the prosthesis and then I relined it, placed it into position and she wore that for approximately three weeks. This is how she appears when she came back and I'm feeling better that we've gotten some tissue closure. So we treated her case with two zygomatic implants. And if you look at this image here, you can see there's two pterygoid implants, two zygomatic implants, two new tough implants, and two original implants from the original case. When you're looking at it from the side, you can see the, the uh, two pterygoids, two zygomatics, and the anterior grouping. Um, unfortunately, in this particular view, this pterygoid didn't show up based on the way I um, plotted the case. Her prosthetic restoration was a pecton frame with milled PMMA gingiva and teeth. So if we look at this x-ray here, you can see distal to the zygoma, we're able to get almost 40% of our anterior posterior relationship by getting the pterygoid implants into use for her case. Again, looking at the post-operative cone beams, you could see we're able to position the implants in good positions. I saw her very recently. Now she's at three years and doing well and implants are all appearing stable. So I took her from this to this type of a design. You see this implant peeking through. That was one of her original implants. Here she is in her smile view and looking at the zygomatic tissues. These are the original implants that she came in with. And these are the areas of the zygomatic implants that we placed. Here are the pterygoid implants. And you see what we were able to achieve. No cantilever. And we got much better anterior posterior relationship. So I saw her during the COVID and um, here she is smiling. And here she is uh, after that doing nicely. And she's happy with our dog and her husband. And she became a big fan of me. So I have a, a little magazine that we got the cover and my partner was a prosthodontist cover. So she's asking me for autographed copies so I could, so she could show it to her friends. So we're happy to help her out and have fun at the same time. By the way, for my Italian friends, this poster back here came from a meeting in 1991 in Rome. And we have a guy named Celletti, Thomas Albrechtson, um, another Swedish famous guy, uh, forget his name. Then there's me down here and Sasha Jovanovic. So this was in 1991. I had the privilege of going to Italy. So just to review for that case, the advantages for zygomatic and implants, greater anterior posterior spread, eliminating cantilever, biomechanical. We know Norris abutments go from zero to 60 and we're able to reorient and position the implants in a proper occlusal scheme and treating these cases is fun. So our next patient, Cara, is a 66 year old healthy white female. Unfortunately, she smokes and she's still smoking. 
She was very phobic about dentistry her whole life, had to go through several dental reconstructions and implant reconstructions, came to me eventually with broken down teeth and, and a failed uh, implant upper in, uh, reconstruction. And she required um, IV sedation. So when she came to see me, she was a dental cripple. So you see, she had broken natural teeth here, the anterior restoration on implants. Some were fractured. Some were, uh, the abutments were broken. It, it was a, a mixed bag. So in my early planning, I'm trying to figure out, will I be able to get any bone in the zone one after I remove these broken implants? The answer is sometimes yes, sometimes maybe, sometimes no. It depends on if they're broken implants, you probably would think that they're well integrated and then they broke. So it, it, it was something that we had to wing it. I was thinking maybe I could go up the side of the nose, zygoma, of course, pterygoid, of course. So my goal would be minimally to have six implants. <clears throat> so we started doing some implant planning using 3D uh, planning sections. And you see that we have a numbering system here that begins at zero because um, the colleagues that helped me on this in planning utilize the European concept starting at zero so you could get up to nine, which would be the 10th implant. It actually makes sense when we're doing these types of cases. So we kind of came up with this design, two anterior, two zygos, two pterygoids. The anteriors were on a tilt and we were gonna see how we could go. What I have found to be most amazing is when we're doing planning with the software that's appropriate for implant planning that can handle pterygoids and zygomatic implants, you could actually see the anatomy very, very well laid out and we could tilt it accordingly and properly and know where we're going. Take a look at the right side pterygoid. You could see that we're gonna go through initially the tuberosity, then we'll go through the pyramidal process of the palatine bone, and then we engage the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. So it sounds tricky, but it's actually pretty straightforward and it's very beautifully done when it's guided. So I'm loving doing these in a guided method. Left side, same thing. And truthfully, years ago, I used to put an implant sort of like this on this angle and it might have ended up in the pyramidal process, but certainly did not go up, up into the uh, pterygoid plate area. So those really weren't pterygoids. So once again, I have to show you this textbook because it's critical that you own it and learn it and use it. Now, an Indian dentist gave a webinar not long ago, and he said this, it's a relatively simple procedure in a complex neighborhood. So it's kind of true, but not really. But if you're doing guided, I think it will work out very well. Then the zygomatic in the planning, you could see the height of the zygoma. This is gonna be an inferior position zygoma. Reason being is I was gonna be, I was gonna be able to put anterior implants in. So I chose to use the posterior implant zygoma. And then if it was a problem in the future, I still would have the superior or anterior implant to utilize. So this printed guide was created and you could see the slot for the zygoma that would correspond with the diamond cylinder. And you could see little cylindrical two millimeter holes back here where the, um, pterygoid implant would go. However, it was too thick. And you see when I, oh, here's a lady getting ready for um, her sedation. As one piece, I was not actually able to get it to bend around the complete arch. So I wound up aborting the use of the guide and I wound up, I tried it in, in uh, cutting it in half, which I was able to position the pterygoid 
And then I decided just to go freehand on the zygoma. Okay, so hey, me. somebody asked me a question. Okay, never mind. So it's been mentioned a few times today, avoid the orbit. Now, you see, we use the, the tool of length several times in several different ways. We use it extra orally to follow the path that our drill is going. And this is very similar to that Zygo guide that uh, Smiler showed us earlier that you could hook onto your handpiece. Now, there was enough material in this patient's mouth with the mouth prop, the throat pack. So anyway, we do this and then we'll put the uh, glasses back down. I wanna make sure that we're going away from the orbit. And once again, this is the posterior implant. The anterior implant would have been over here. Okay, so here we're, we're placing it into position. We're, we're using the Norris final drill. And once again, I use this uh, depth gauge tool several different ways. I put it over the top of the zygomatic bone to note how thick the bone is above the top of the implant. In our teaching courses, we call that where's the meat, where's the beef. We want to make sure that you're not too shallow, which would then allow it to be very thin and you could get a potential fracture. Secondly, you want to make sure that the coronal aspect of the implant is at the correct height and you want it to be as deep into the ridge as possible so you don't get very thick contours peeking through a soft tissue. And the implant's ready to go in. As you see, it's being placed. Um, it was mentioned earlier that you could use uh, gauze packs in the infratemporal fossa. This is an example of that. And once again, Always remember that if you use throat packs or gauze packs to take them out. So here the implant is in position. You can see we got beautiful bone at the facial aspect and proper depth in the crest area. Here you could see the pterygoid implant in position and the buccal fat pad is just ready to jump out and join that zygomatic implant. So <clears throat> the pterygoid implant in a freehand way is predictable if you're doing, but guided, it's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, our other side, you notice that the Schneiderian membrane was torn and I was um, going to put some uh, PRF membranes over it. I tried teasing it back, but it was still a couple of little areas. I believe that if you could keep the Schneiderian membrane intact, it's advantageous. I will say that somebody at the beginning said it doesn't matter, but I think it does matter. So I'm going to suggest to try to maintain and preserve the Schneiderian membrane as often as possible. So here's a couple of the PRF membranes. I laid them in over the, um, the little perforations that I had noticed. Implant ready to go in. It went in and well, look what happened here. Sure enough, I was not able to get... See, I even pulled the corner of it over to try to prevent it from falling into the sinus. Anyway, it slipped in. So we move on. So we have the abutment in ideal position. And I did tough. Tough implant in the anterior. So she ended up with two tough, two zygo, two pterygoid. Final case, uh, x-ray cone beam looks good. You can see the pterygoid implants nicely here. And she's smiling and this is her provisional restoration. She's wearing this now. We'll do questions in a minute. She'll do um, this provisional for about six months. Here she's smiling away and she's healing up nicely. 
plaque control could be better, but we have a nice thick zygomatic. And then the occlusal view, you could see we got beautiful anterior posterior spread. Uh, one cantilever each is looking okay, and she should do fine long term. So my third case is a lady, Deb. She's 67 year old, healthy white female. She had a history of failed all on four about eight years ago. They had left one tooth for reasons that I don't understand. And she was referred to me from a local office and they, that office did her, low, uh, her lower arch and they had excessive cantilevers, but their claim was the bone was so strong it would be okay. So I had some uh, cantilevers on the lower re removed. So due to the excessive bone loss and atrophy, my decision was to utilize the Norris Easy Goma approach. So just in my original planning and initial days, you see she had three cantilevers on the lower. I was gonna take off these two. And then I was just doing some simplified planning to see what we could do to help her out. I did see about seven millimeters right in the midline. You could see her bite was way off. We set up the preliminaries to try to uh, flatten out the bite, perhaps in a more primitive way than Zingari showed us or Antipov earlier today, but we're still trying to level it out. And here's a clinical view. One molar that was in here, unknown reason. And you can see this is all flabby maxillary tissue. And the, the intraoral space is, is huge in her case from the severe atrophy. And her hygiene is just so-so. She picked her colors and we're ready to go. So if you have done Easy Goma, you would recognize these images because these come from the Easy Goma uh, software planning. This is the planning of her right side. Um, you have two pterygoids, excuse me, two zygomas, one pterygoid, and implant one six. That's using the European system. One quadrant is the right. The six would be the distal pterygoid. And in the planning, it tells us what size would be ideal, what type of multi-unit abutment would be ideal. And the arrow is pointing to the one six posterior zygoma. And then you see pterygoid here. Here is the, the work on the pterygoid implant. You see how amazing the software is for planning the implant. Cause you see how it's like a, a figure eight design. It goes in, goes out, and you could position the implant at a proper depth, proper angulation to engage the best bone. And then on the software here, you could actually determine the uh, bone density using coloration and the Hounsfield units to show what type of density you'll have. So when the implants are green, they're at a good position. Occasionally when you have a quad zygoma, you may all of a sudden see them light up as red because they're actually clashing. See, these two are heading in that direction, but they're not red because they do not clash. Clashing means they touch each other. And this is the left side showing the pterygoid implant into the medial plate and the two zygomatic implants as we desire. So here again, two quadrant, you see the six is the posterior zygoma, the eight, is the pterygoid of the left side, left quadrant. And this is a beautiful example of what we're hoping to achieve. Next thing is the pins. This guide is so precise. There are locations of pins. So when you put the uh, easy goma guide in position, the pins, as you see in this position here, will go through, engage bone and be locked into position nicely. So here we are planning the zygomatic implant again, and it's looking very straightforward. The other zygoma on that side, so we could see how they go into position. And this again is the left side pterygoid. 
beautiful positioning. And then again, the pins, pins. Then we get a printed model that we could put the guide on and off just to get familiar with how it's gonna seat in the case. Now, the Easy Goma surgery kit um, is very daunting when you first look at it, but once you get used to it, it's actually quite nice and straightforward and very, very well and precisely developed. There are pterygoid areas with the spoon for the pterygoid with a long drill, and Zingari showed us that earlier today. And then the first step of the zygomatic has a different spoon that allows this round burr to uh, make a notch or the um, one of these two uh, twist drills to make a notch. And then you could go in with the round burr. And then of course the famous diamond channel burr. So here's a closer view of the, of the kit. And then these are, um, rotation of the implant is ideal. So here is the easy goma in position. The pins are in place and we're ready to start with zygoma or pterygoid, whichever we feel like doing first. So here is a twist drill, show you how it goes through the initial uh, key here. And then this is the one for pterygoid, as you see here. And if I go back one spot, you'll notice that it says tough because we use an 18 millimeter tough implant in this pterygoid instead of the terra fit because I wanted the top of the implant to be uh, in proximity with the bone. So here is the uh, tough implant being positioned in to the case. And again, you get a nice clinical view. Here is the round burr um, drilling through the maxillary and the opening of the zygoma to allow for the diamond drill. We often use the, the depth tool to guide our case. We use it. We know we're not gonna be in the orbit because you know, we plan the case away from that. But you could see we could check our depth and uh, make sure we're going at the right orientation. Once again, the diamond drill getting ready to be put positioned at the zygomatic. Then this is the famous diamond cylindrical drill, allowing for us to make the chamber. The final drill is going into position. And we have in advance, a beautiful prosthesis that was able to be established because we knew where the exact positioning was gonna be for the implants. So you also notice is an anterior implant that I placed non-guided these three and these three were done with Easy Goma. And I took Easy Goma out and I positioned one more. And the reason was I wanted to even improve further the cross arch support and the anterior posterior spread. So we have the implants in position as you see here. These three were set up by Easy Goma, as were these three. And this one I just positioned in on my own. You see the final cone beam, everything's looking good. Nice smile. And I put her case in actually the next day because we were all fatigued from this procedure. Here's her easy goma uh, guides. A little black and blue here, but otherwise her smile is good. She's looking good and she's happy. So once again, these procedures are important to close the window of negative opportunity, but these patients already passed. They're already in the negative opportunity. So by using these products from Norris Medical, we're able to give these people another chance on life. So in summary, I wanted to share with you 
the power of Norris Medical's implant system in helping treat these dental cripples. The unique features of the system of EasyGoma, of the abutments, makes it easy for the skillful employment of them to help our patients. So we have this little mural in the back of my office and we have people come back and they show us how they're happy and smiling. Some of them have their pictures of the way they were before and we're just gathering up these cases all the time. So this is my lab colleague, Peterson, who I'm happy to be with. This is during the COVID. And I always like to put my father up because he's 96, he's still hanging in there. He was a World War II veteran and his jacket is the Palm Beach Senior Tennis League that he was one of the, the co-developers of. And it became the largest senior tennis league in the whole country. And um, so I always like to give him a shout out. So thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed this Zygomania 2. And I was gonna be the last person, but I'm going to stop now because I do want to um, introduce our next speaker. And then after our next speaker, if you have any questions for me or him, we'll take the questions at that point in time. So thank you, my teammates. I'm going to stop share.